Hello everyone, today I'm going to be giving you a beginner's guide to Counter-Strike Knives. This video will go over the history, rarity, general opinions, and general knowledge for every knife in Counter-Strike so that anyone could understand, whether you're a new player or you just want to learn something new. So, with all that out the way, let's learn about some knives. First though, let's go over some basic information. Knives are cosmetics that replace the default knife and can be obtained via trading, buying, or gambling <clears throat> being unboxed. If you decide you want to unbox a knife, there are different cases that have different knives, and your chance for a knife is roughly 1 in 400 cases, or 0.25%. There are 21 unique knife models, including the default knives, that can be equipped and held by your agent. You can only have one knife equipped at a time, but you can have different knives equipped for T-side or CT-side. Knives can also have different skins, which changes how the blade and sometimes the handle of a knife model looks. Typically, a larger blade is better, so you can see more of the skin on the knife if you have one, and a knife without a skin is referred to as a vanilla knife. There are a lot of different knife skins, too many for this video, so if you want a video breaking down knife skins, comment down below. In their names, knives have a little star to indicate they're of a higher rarity, but there are a couple knives that don't, because they were rewarded by Steam support and correctly named. Only one no-star knife exists in the world for sure, but there is a rumored second one, more on that later. Different knife models also have different pullout and inspect animations, along with some knives having rare animations. So, those are the basics. Now, let's get into these knives. Starting us off, we have the default knives. First, we have the default knife for terrorists. This knife was surprisingly not the original default knife, more on that later, but became the default knife sometime during the beta. I can't find a definitive date when, but it was likely changed when the Steam Open Beta released. This knife doesn't have an official name, but is based on the Russian Kizlyad DV-1. Next is the default knife for the counter-terrorists. Just like the T-side default knife, it wasn't the original default knife, but became the default knife at a later date during the beta. This knife also doesn't have an official name, and is based on the German Acorn Solingen KM5000, but is commonly mistaken as the Acorn Solingen Recondo 4. The Arms Deal update released on the 14th of August 2013 and introduced the Karambit, M9 Bayonet, Bayonet, Flip Knife, and Gun Knife as the first ever new knives in game. The Karambit is undoubtedly one of the most iconic knives in Counter-Strike, and is regarded by the community as one of the best in the game. It's sleek, unobtrusive while playing, and has a nice inspect animation where you spin it in your hand. Because of this, it's the most expensive and most sought after knife in CS, with the vanilla version going for around $1.6 thousand dollars. The Karambit is also one of the only knives with the vanilla no-star variant, valued at over $40,000. The M9 Bayonet is also incredibly iconic, second only to the Karambit and is another community favorite. The M9 Bayonet is very rough and rugged looking with a prominent backsaw. The M9 also has some very simple animations, but they're just as nice as the Karambits. And as I've already said, the M9 Bayonet is second only to the Karambit, including how expensive it is. A vanilla M9 Bayonet also goes for around $1.6,000. The Bayonet is essentially the younger brother of the M9 Bayonet. These blades are very similar, but the regular Bayonet ends up looking like a less detailed M9 Bayonet. The back saw is gone, the edge is uniform and less pronounced, the fuller is longer, and the blade is all relatively the same color. Because of some of these differences, the Bayonet is cheaper, with a vanilla Bayonet going for around $830. The bayonet was originally the default knife for counter-terrorists in very early versions of the game, but was later replaced by the default knife we all know, and repurposed into the knife we have today. The flip knife is a fairly mediocre knife as the community sees it, with a nice pullout animation, but not much else, and it has a long swept blade that realistically wouldn't fit when folded. Back in the day, oppers would use them because after getting an op kill, you'd quickly switch between your knife and then back to your op, so having a knife with a nice pullout animation would look much better. Nowadays though, flip knives aren't really sought after, and a vanilla one goes for around $575. The flip knife was also the original default knife for terrorists, but just like the bayonet, it was later changed to the default knife we know. There's also a rumored no star vanilla flip knife, but we're unsure if one actually exists. If you remove the star from the link to a knife, the link won't work. This is true for every knife except two, the karambit and the flip knife. Because of this, it's very possible a no-star vanilla flip knife also exists somewhere in the world, but it would have to be in a private inventory never scraped by any skin database. The gut knife is mostly unpopular within the CS community due to the fact it's very simple, doesn't have any special animations, and is fairly bulky. However, recently it's gotten a little more popular and a little more liked. Personally, I think it's pretty good looking and has a nice pullout animation. But despite that, a vanilla gut knife only goes for around $177. The gut knife also has a little inscription in the blade that says CSGO 2013 on it, which I think is a pretty neat detail. The The Hunt Begins update released on the 1st of May 2014 and added the Huntsman knife, making it the second ever update to release a knife. The Huntsman knife was the only knife released in the The Hunt Begins update and is another less popular knife, but still fairly liked within the community. 
This knife looks like something you'd find in a Bass Pro Shop, and it's very rugged and outdoorsy, but also looks very modern. The Huntsman is comparable to the Bayonets by design, but it shares its animations with the Gut Knife, which is one of the main reasons for its unpopularity. Because of this, a vanilla Huntsman goes for around $336. Operation Breakout released on the 1st of July 2014 and added one of the most iconic knives to date, the Butterfly Knife. The Butterfly Knife is right up there with the Karambit and M9 Bayonet in terms of iconicness, popularity, and price. Butterfly Knives are incredibly popular due to one main reason, their animations. The very flashy and clean inspect animations on this knife make it what it is, and Valve did a very good job with it. The Butterfly Knife has two different pullout animations and three different inspect animations. Due to its flashiness and popularity outside of CS as well, a vanilla butterfly knife goes for around $1.7,000. Operation Bloodhound released on the 26th of May 2015 and brought along with it the falchion knife. The falchion knife is also among the less sought after knives, however it has a very sleek design and some very nice animations, including a rare inspect animation where you balance it on your hand. This inspect animation was 1 in 101 in CSGO, but it seems much more common in CS2. The Falchion Knife also has a grip that matches certain skins, which is a neat little detail. Overall though, the Falchion is very clean and has some flashy animations, and a vanilla Falchion Knife goes for around $237. The Falchion Knife also takes its name and inspiration from a sword of the same name that dates back to 13th century Europe, and the Falchion Knife is described as a modern homage to the Falchion Sword. The Shadow Boxing update released on the 17th of September 2015 and introduced the aptly named Shadow Daggers. The Shadow Daggers are incredibly unique, but also mostly disliked by the community. They're the only knives in CS that are dual wielded, and they're based off of push daggers. Because push daggers are meant to be easy to conceal, the Shadow Daggers are very small, and that means you don't get much to show off, despite there being two of them. The Shadow Daggers are considered ugly by a lot of people, and while that may or may not be true, the Shadow Daggers have some very nice animations in my opinion. If you want to pick up a pair, vanilla Shadow Daggers go for about $195. Operation Wildfire released on the 18th of February 2016 and introduced the very large Bowie Knife. The Bowie Knife is another unpopular knife, mainly because of two reasons. The knife itself is very big, and you can't see your left hand while you're using it. The fact you can't see your left hand doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but it just feels wrong. And as I've already said, this knife is big, which means it takes up a lot of space, but it also means you get a lot of knife. A vanilla Bowie Knife goes for around $222. The Bowie knife was also planned pretty early. References to the view model textures were removed from the game files when Operation Breakout released, which implies it was thought out much earlier on, than released later. The A New Horizon update released on the 3rd of August 2018 and introduced the Talon knife, Stiletto knife, Ursus knife, and Navaha knife, making it the second ever update to introduce more than one knife. The Talon Knife is basically a little brother to the Karambit. It's obviously very similar, due to the fact it's based off of a Karambit, and because of that, opinions are pretty split between the Talon and Karambit. Some people think the Karambit is better because it's sleeker and doesn't have the bulky ivory handle, and some people think the Talon is better because of the handle or the animations, one of which it shares with the Karambit. Regardless of your opinion on it, a vanilla Talon Knife goes for around $660. The Stiletto Knife is fairly well received due to its very clean design and nice animations. The surface area for the skin is pretty small due to how thin the blade is, but that hasn't stopped it from gaining popularity within the community. The only thing holding this knife back is the size and thinness of the blade, but the knife is called the Stiletto, literally meaning a dagger with long slender blade, so it's really not a surprise. A vanilla Stiletto Knife goes for around $552. The Ursus Knife is probably the most C-tier knife in Counter-Strike. It isn't outstanding, but it isn't very boring or bad either. It has a unique looking blade and some pretty nice animations, but it has a bland handle and an overall simple design. Being middle of the pack, its price reflects that as a vanilla Ursus Knife goes for around $440. The Ursus Knife is based on the Tanto style knife and is meant to look like a knife you'd use outdoors, like for camping. Its name also reflects that, with Ursus meaning bear in Latin, complementing its outdoorsy design. The Navaha knife is undoubtedly the most disliked knife in Counter-Strike. The blade is very stubby and has very little blade surface area, which means if you have a skin, there will be less of it on the screen. But, it does mean that Navaha knives are typically pretty cheap, so if you do like them, you have lots of options for cheap. Due to how unpopular they are, a vanilla Navaha knife goes for around $198. The Cache and Release update released on the 18th of October 2019 and reintroduced one of the most iconic and nostalgic knives in Counter-Strike, the Classic Knife, also known as the Badlands Bowie. 
The classic knife is a popular knife, especially among those who played CS 1.6 and CS Source. The classic knife was reintroduced to the series for the 20th anniversary of Counter-Strike. The knife is also very unique looking, featuring Hamon, and if you don't know what Hamon is, it's that wavy pattern along the blade. The classic knife is also one of the few knives with an idle animation, and it's probably the best idle animation in the game, and despite the nostalgia value, the classic knife goes for around $498. Operation Shattered Web released on the 19th of November 2019 and introduced the Skeleton Knife, Nomad Knife, Survival Knife, and Paracord Knife, also making it the first operation to release more than one knife. The Skeleton Knife is pretty popular among CS players, despite being so bare bones. The Skeleton Knife is obviously skeletonized, with just a wrapped handle. The most noticeable thing on this knife is the giant hole in the middle, which your character will use to spin the knife around when inspecting. The fantastic inspect animations, along with a sleek blade, make this knife as popular as it is, and a vanilla skeleton knife goes for around $1.2,000. The Nomad knife is somewhat well liked, but it's more of a sleeper pick than a widely adored knife, like the Karambit for example. The Nomad knife has some of the best animations in game in my opinion, with a rare pullout animation that looks like you just cut your hand, and an inspect animation that is just satisfying for some reason. The Nomad is fairly simple otherwise, but it's a very well done simplicity. Because of that simplicity, a vanilla Nomad knife goes for around $662. The Nomad knife also takes its name from the word Nomad, meaning people with no permanent home that travel from place to place, and the Nomad knife is fittingly referred to in the game files as Weapon Knife Outdoor, which I thought was interesting. The Survival Knife is another majorly disliked knife, being referred to as a can opener, and the resemblance is definitely there. The survival knife just has an odd design with a very simple plastic looking handle. The survival knife doesn't really have anything going on, but it isn't awful, just unfortunately plain. Because of how basic it is, a vanilla survival knife goes for around $320. The paracord knife isn't very popular, but there are definitely a small subset of people who like it. It's another survival themed knife, but it's also very bare bones just like the skeleton knife. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the same quality of animations as the Skeleton Knife, and overall the Paracord Knife is just very simple, which is why a vanilla Paracord Knife goes for around $286. So, that's a beginner's guide to every knife in Counter-Strike. Let me know in the comments if you learned anything, and leave a like if you enjoyed, or maybe subscribe if you want to be notified whenever I release a new video. And I've also just set up memberships for those who really want to support me. Anyway, I am BP, and I'll see you in the next video.